Okay, what we're going to talk about is something called glomerular filtration rate. I'm going to go through this relatively quickly because I want to make it under my 10 minutes. I have two parts. The first thing we're going to talk about is just a basic introduction about what GFR, glomerular filtration rate, rate is, and what are the pressures that influence it. The second part will be how do we control it. One of the first things I need to do is draw up some basic anatomy. And what I'm drawing here is something called a glomerulus. And a glomerulus is a tuft of capillaries. If you'd like some context, I can draw a little, I can attempt to draw, a little kidney up here. And there's about one million glomeruli per kidney. So they're very tiny. And they tend to lie right out here in the cortex. There's some deeper ones that are called juxtamedullary, but the main ones are, or 85% of them are cortical, and they're out here on the cortex. So this right here is called the glomerulus. Some other anatomy we care about is this is called the afferent arterial. And this is going to bring blood in. Something called the efferent arterial. I'm just going to abbreviate it or shorten it to efferent. And this is going to allow blood to escape. Another thing that's fairly important is something called Bowman's capsule. Bowman's capsule is going to wind its way around, around in what's called the proximal convoluted tubule. It's going to dip down through something called the loop of Henle, go through the distal convoluted tubule. And a very important thing that we're going to talk about here in a second is it's going to come back near the afferent and the efferent of the glomerulus that first gave way to the filtrate. So again, this would be called Bowman's capsule. It's called the proximal convoluted tubule, which I'll shorten to PCT. This is the loop of Henle, and this is the distal convoluted tubule. Why is this all important? This is all important because essentially 25% of your blood is delivered to your kidneys at any given one time. That's a lot of blood that's being delivered to your kidneys. You're going to create filtrate, which is everything smaller than a protein is basically going to get filtered over. So there's going to be protein that's going to hang back here. But everything that's smaller than a protein is going to be created into something called filtrate. It's about 180 liters per day of filtrate created. And then that filtrate is, again, everything smaller than a protein. So there'll be things over here like glucose. Glucose. And that glucose we'll draw here, it's going to be a lot of sodium and other ions too. I'll just do sodium. So these little guys are sodium. I'm purposefully drawing a little bit of sodium out here, but drawing it more concentrated through the loop of Henle. Um, there could be other things like uh, vitamins and minerals and things that you don't want to lose. Vitamins, amino acids, all of those things are going to get swept up into this filtrate because you're filtering everything smaller than a protein. What you have to do is you have to pick that back up. First of all, where you pick it back up is the efferent gives rise to a capillary bed called the paratubular capillaries, and this is going to wind its way around and pick things back up. Eventually, this is going to head back to systemic circulation. As things are winding through, as this paratubular is winding through, then hopefully there are transporters taking this glucose that you don't want to lose back into the paratubular blood. Obviously, uh, just from an evolutionary point of view, you don't want to be spilling glucose into your urine. Think about an animal in the middle of winter that's working very, very hard. I think about a deer that's working very, very hard to get food you don't want that to get lost into the urine, so you need to take this glucose back up. So all of this wants to get taken back up into the paratubular capillaries. What you want to do is you want to leave back the waste. <coughs> One of the things, though, is these transporters are not exactly perfect. They just pick up at a steady rate, and it really doesn't matter, to some extent, how fast everything is flowing by. So if they're picking up at a steady rate and everything flies by really, really fast, that's called a high GFR. 
Well, then what will happen is you will lose things to urine. Some of this glucose will go by so fast that it won't get transported back into the blood, and it'll end up over here where you're going to lose it into the urine. Another thing to keep in mind is this system is a little bit leaky, so things like urea can find their way back out of the tubules and into the blood. If so, if GFR is too low, then waste leaks back. I think of two metaphors. I think of that I Love Lucy episode where she's trying to box the chocolate, and if the conveyor belt goes too fast, she starts losing the chocolate. I'll try and annotate to that YouTube video. So if everything goes too fast, can't pick up what you want, and it ends up in your urine. If it goes by too slow, you pick up too much, and essentially you're in kidney failure then because all your waste products are making it back into the blood. One of the things we need to, or another metaphor is if you go to the grocery store too fast, you end up forgetting things, you lose things, you don't get things that you want. And so you forget the milk or you forget the bread. If you go through too slow, then the ding-dongs and the ho-hos and the pork rinds and everything starts to look good, so you pick up too much. Now there's three pressures that we care about because one of the first things we're going to do in this first video is talk about pressures. We're going to talk about pressures that control this amount of filtrate. And I think I'm going to just do that in a part two video so I can make sure I can go really, really slow. And then I'll do a part three video, which will be all of the things that control GFR.